Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video. Today it's time to replace this old Faraday system with new speaker strobes. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's what's going in to replace the system. We have these new L-series speaker strobes, both red and white, um, and some ceiling ones. And then we have these Notifier BG12 style pull stations. So let's go ahead and get started. So because I'm transitioning from horns to speakers, I'm gonna go ahead and do this as a precaution. Uh, what I'm doing here is removing the audible signaling wires from the panel's necks. And the reason I'm doing that, like I've said before, is because in the event that the alarm accidentally gets tripped while I'm uh, working on the system, um, no matter how it goes, it's gonna be bad because if I have speakers on the system and then all of a sudden 24 volts gets sent through the speaker circuit, that could damage the speakers. And the same applies in the reverse because if I connect these to the amplifiers and I trip the system, then the amplifiers are going to run these horns, which is not right. I don't know if that would actually cause any damage, but it's best to not find out. I can start by removing this device right here. So I'll take my impact driver and remove these two screws. Now we can pull this out to expose the wiring. I'm going to go ahead and undo the wiring terminals on these. Go ahead and put that new bracket on and then tighten these screws. So the side right here with the little horn symbol is the uh, speaker side. And then this is the strobe side. So the colored pair is going to be the audible circuit. And then this is the strobe circuit. So now we got to fold back these wires to leave some space for the speaker, the speaker strobe. And then what we can do is we can go ahead and take the unit and then pop that right on its base and then tighten that screw. So there we go, device one down, looks really nice. Now let's move on to this pull station. So I haven't disabled any zones. So as soon as I open this pull station, an alarm would sound. So the goal is to open it and then quickly push in the switch so nothing happens. And then now I'm um, gonna go ahead and remove this from the box. Go ahead and close the station. And that way we can remove this without causing any alarms. So now I'm going to go ahead and undo the wiring. Although the new pole station will fit on this box, it's going to look a lot nicer on this one, which is a BG12 box. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this box and put in the new box. So I'm going to take this wiring and then make sure it's straight. And then undo these two screws in the back. And then carefully slide off this box as to avoid damaging the paint on the wall. Now we feed this wire through the hole in the box. And then what we can do is send in our screws. There is a piece of plywood behind this device, which will anchor it to the wall. This is just a conventional pull station. So we're just gonna wire these to the terminals. And now we can open the pull station you can technically use screws, but this box has snaps. So what you can do is just push this onto the box and it'll click in and then the installation is complete. So there we have it, two new devices and it looks really nice. Made a time-lapse of myself replacing the other pull station. Pretty much the same process, slightly different model, but remove the pull station, install the new one. In this case, I did not have to install the new box because I like this white wire mold box, but I put in the new pull station. I also replaced this other horn strobe with this L-series speaker strobe. This one was a little finicky. When I was trying to get it on the mounting bracket, there's some wires in the box that were not cooperating, so the device would not stay on its bracket, but I eventually got it to stay. Same deal in the utility room. I removed the stopper cover, opened the pull station, removed it, undid the wiring, and installed the new pull station. So this unit right here is going to be replaced in a slightly different way. So obviously this unit right here is a wall mount horn strobe, but I only have one wall mount speaker strobe left, and this one's going in the garage. So I'm going to have to put a ceiling mount speaker strobe in this room, but that's perfectly fine because I've already pre-wired for one. You can see I have a ceiling box already roughed in. Um, so all I have to do is I've already run the wire down. So I'll just make that junction, cover this unit up, and then just install the speaker strobe up here. We'll start by removing this wire guard. Then we can start removing the horn strobe. So 
this looks really messy because it is, but I'll just briefly explain how it works. So this is the speaker output. So I ran a wire from this box to this box. Um, so this ties into that. And then you can see I've gone ahead and wagoed it up. So this runs up to that. Um, and then same thing with the strobe wire. So now I'm gonna cover up this box and this box and then install the speaker strobe right there. Go ahead and remove the cover from this box. Go ahead and remove those wire nuts. It's important to not use any sort of power tools to tighten down the screws because since this is a ceiling unit and this is the slightly older version without the full ring around it, the mounting plate has a tendency to warp and that means that it's not going to make full contact with the device which can pose a problem. I'm going to tap this unit at 2 watts and 25 volts and then also I'm going to set it at 30 candela. Go ahead and snap the unit onto the bracket and tighten down the screw. And that's all done. Go ahead and put the cover on that and there we go. So you can see now we have a speaker strobe at the ceiling and then there's no wall mount device. So this is gonna get replaced. So first I'll pull down this smoke head. Gone ahead and wired up the base, so now we're going to slide this onto the mount and put in the next screw. So now let's go ahead and use our impact driver to remove this horn strobe. So the base is all wired up as you can see, so now we can go ahead and pop this speaker strobe into the bracket and tighten down that screw. Let's start removing this remote strobe in the bathroom. I've got the new base installed. You can see I have my EOLR resistor um, across the positive and negative. So once I put this on, the panel is gonna stop beeping, hopefully. And then I'll just have to tighten down that screw. All done, so now all we have to do is install the speaker strobe and pole station in the garage. Out in the garage, I went ahead and replaced this pole station. You can actually see the enunciator uh, flashing in the background because I caused a trouble by removing this pole station. Went ahead and installed the same thing, NBG12 pole station. And then up here, I replaced the mechanical horn strobe with a white L-series speaker strobe. Fun fact, the mounting bracket for this unit was actually homemade. I made a video about 3D printing this bracket, but it was pretty cool. This unit has a 3D printed mounting bracket, so you can see these are homemade contacts. I'm a little concerned that this might cause a ground fault, but uh, hopefully it doesn't. I mean, these devices won't be up for too long. There we go. The system is now installed. So now we're gonna go ahead and program system sensor sync into the fire panel. So we're gonna go to NACs, and then our strobe circuits are NAC one and three. So coding instead of steady is gonna be sync system sensor. And then we'll do the same for NAC3. And boom. Obviously, I also connected the um, speakers. So now the system is active. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? All right, so that's that. As you can see, the system does work. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. Please do like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Farewell.